Hello, and welcome to Ask a Historian. I'm Matthew Wilkinson, historian with Heritage Mississauga. Each week, we invite you to send in your questions, and we'll explore the fascinating history of the city of Mississauga together. Like, subscribe, and follow us, and stay up to date on all the heritage happenings with Heritage Mississauga. For this week's episode, we feature three questions we received this week about different parts of the story and the history of the city of Mississauga. Thank you, Kayla, for your question. The historic village of Dixie, one of the founding villages of the city of Mississauga, as you, as you may know, Mississauga is, is, is not a, a, a village that became a town that became a city, but rather a city born through amalgamation of places that were once independent of each other. And Dixie is one of those small communities that predates the city of Mississauga. The small village of Dixie, the Crossroads community, was known over its history by a variety of informal and formal names. Those names included Fountain Hill, Font Hill, Onion Town, Irish Town, Cork Town, and Sydenham. The first settler in the Dixie area was known to be Philip Cody, a loyalist from Massachusetts who arrived in 1807, having purchased Sarah Grant's 100-acre land grant at what is now the southeast corner of Cotha Road and Dundas Street. Cody built and operated an inner tavern, which became an early stopping place for, early, for many settlers as, when they, as they completed their settlement duties. One of Cody's first patrons was the newlywed couple of Joseph and Jane Silverthorne. And if you're recognizing the name Cody on the landscape, he, uh, Philip Cody, was the grandfather of famed, I guess, Wild West uh, uh, showman from the United States, Buffalo Bill Cody. Um, and Buffalo Bill Cody, uh, his father, Isaac Cody, had been born here in historic Mississauga before returning to the United States, where Buffalo Bill himself was born. Although, interestingly, is, is Buffalo Bill, uh, in, a, in an 1897 visit to, uh, to Ontario, uh, recognized or remembered, uh, and it spoke in the newspaper, about having relatives in the nearby vicinity and considered himself half Canadian. Uh, so interesting kind of local connections. But uh, back to, uh, dig digressing a bit, so back to our story of Dixie. Dixie developed a hotel, a general store, a carpentry shop, and a union chapel, that's being Dixie Union Chapel, which stands today, uh, an 1836 building standing at the northeast corner of Dundas and, uh, and, uh, and Cothra Road. Um, there was an informal schoolhouse, the first of our kind in uh, the first schoolhouse of its kind in historic Mississauga was known as the Octagonal School and it stood behind the Union Chapel. As the market as market gardening grew in the community, so, so did the uh, so, so did an influx of people. They, the, the, the population began to increase, eventually stretching eastward towards what is now Dixie Road. The first post office to serve the community uh, operated under William Kennedy in the Atlantic Hotel under the name of Fountain Hill. That was in 1864. Later that year, only a few months later, so Fountain Hill was the official name uh, as of April of 1864, but on, on July 1st of 1864, the post office and then the community that followed officially adopted the name of Dixie. So you might be wondering why Dixie? The community chose to honor a beloved horse and buggy doctor, uh, one of those, those uh, uh, traveling doctors who would, uh, who would cover a wide area for, for their with their services. His name was Dr. Beaumont Wilson Bowen Dixie, and he lived between 1819 and 1898. Dr. Dixie was born in 1819 in Wales and came to Canada around 1831. After studying at the Upper Canada College, he received his medical license in 1842. He eventually settled nearby in Springfield, what would later become Arendelle, in 1846. And sadly, during a diphtheria epidemic in Toronto Township, uh, between 1853 and 1854, Dr. Dixie, while attending many local residents who were afflicted, also brought the, the illness home to his family and lost four of his own children, Anna, Harriet, Wollston, and Richard. And they're all buried at St. Peter's Anglican Cemetery in Arendelle. There is an outpouring of grief for the for the loss for the doctor's loss, and Doctor Dixie's own courage and dedication to her, to his profession earned him the respect and admiration of many of his neighbors. He died on his birthday on March twenty seventh, eighteen ninety eight, having served his community right up until his death at the age of seventy nine. He was regarded as as one of the leading physicians and surgeons in the province, and was a greatly beloved local figure. And it was after Doctor Dixie again in uh, in eighteen sixty four that Fountain Hill 
renamed itself officially as Dixie. And eventually the name of the road, Third Line East, would carry the name of Dixie Road in his honor. Uh, Dixie, Dr. Dixie, along with his wife and children, are buried at St. Peter's Anglican Cemetery in Arundel. Thank you, Maria, for your question around the Britannia Road signs. And uh, I had a hand in this several years ago, but I must admit I had to uh, look back in my memory to see how long ago it was. And it actually came to be in 2010. Uh, so, yeah, as you notice, if you're driving along uh, here on Ontario Street or uh, there, there's actually signs also along Britannia Road as well, denoting the, the kind of the historic area that would that was once the uh, the uh, Lost Village community of Britannia. Uh, um, it was it was never more than than really a hamlet, although we have a few uh, historic uh, sites, uh, historic buildings that survive, and of course the name Britannia Road recalls uh, that early connection as well. Um, the signs themselves mark uh, kind of the unofficial borders of the of the village of Britannia. Uh, in that sense, it marks the kind of the postal zone that was served by the Britannia Post Office. Uh, although the area around Britannia began to draw settlers as early as 1819, the name Britannia was not officially adopted until 1863, with the opening of the first post office under Postmaster Joseph Muir. Also depicted, if you if you look at the sign, uh, you will see a background image of the Britannia Schoolhouse and a horse and wagon team in the foreground. The Britannia Schoolhouse, which stands today a little bit south on uh, of Britannia on here in Terra Street, uh, just to the south of of uh, Matheson, uh, the Britannia Schoolhouse was officially known as School Section Number no. Twelve in Toronto Township, and was built in 1852 on land set aside by King William IV or the Crown for the benefit of the children of Peel County. This was uh, a farm parcel, a 200 acre farm parcel, that was to be rented out, and its and its income from the rent uh, brought in to uh, serve educational purposes in in historic Peel County. It was the second school building to be built in the community, and it also served as an early community meeting place. The school closed in 1959, and after sitting derelict until 1982, it was, it was restored and today is lovingly cared for and programmed by the Friends of the Old Britannia Schoolhouse and the Peel Public School Board. Uh, we look forward to the days when, when the, uh, the, the school reopens after COVID here and we're able once again to, uh, to meet the, the passionate staff at, uh, that run the Britannia Schoolhouse programs, but also just to be able to visit once again. It's uh, far too long. Uh, the schoolhouse is, I can't, uh, is, a, is a tremendous heritage landmark and is designated by the city of Mississauga under the terms of the Ontario Heritage Act. Um, on the sign, you see, uh, the schoolhouse being in the background, the foreground depicts uh, a, a carriage horses, a carriage and, and a, a team of horses. Um, and they drew their inspiration from one of the best known stories around the history of Britannia itself. Uh, Theller Washington Johnston, who lived between 1840 and 1918, was a noted and respected farmer at Britannia, and in 1890 was, was, uh, is, is regarded as being one of the, the leading or preeminent horsemen in Canada. In 1896, the Women's Institute of Canada collectively presented Lady Aberdeen, wife of the Governor General of Canada, Lord, Lord Aberdeen, who was Governor General between 1893 and 1898, with a carriage and team of horses. The horses were from the farm of Theller Johnston of Britannia, later known as Carriage Horse Farm. One can also imagine that the, the people depicted on the sign riding in the carriage might be on their way to church or a Sunday school at the nearby Britannia United Church, formerly the Methodist Church, which stands today near the historic heart of the village of Britannia at the intersection of here Ontario Street and Britannia Road. The road also named that because it led to the village of Britannia. The church was built in 1843 on land donated by Joseph Gardner, one of Britannia's earliest settlers, and the cemetery behind the church, and in that cemetery you can find the names of many of the early families, many of whom traveled the historic roadways by horse and carriage, and who helped to shape modern Mississauga from our not-too-distant past. Thank you, Alexia, for your, your question about the community of Liskar. And one of those mysteries, perhaps, on our landscape. Um, Liskar, as a name, uh, the, the person who is named for, doesn't really have much to do with the history of Mississauga, but it the community took its name uh, during a time in which he was uh, a well-known uh, personage in Canada. 
The Liskar area of Mississauga and Liskar Drive in particular take their name from the historic community that grew and flourished and eventually faded that was centered around the modern intersection of Derry Road and Winston Churchill. The, com the community itself was officially named Liskar with the opening of the post office on August 1st of 1871. Uh, this, the post office was located in a store run by Samuel Alexander. The name remained in use until only about 1915, when the post office quietly closed and the rural, and rural mill delivery began. Eventually, the name of the community faded from everyday use and recognition, only to be revived more in more recent years with suburban development and the spread of population in that part of uh, in that part of our city. The name, but the name Liskar itself, uh, it, uh, it came about in honor of Sir John Young, the Baron Liskar, who was the second Governor General of Canada. He served as Governor General of Canada from 1868 to 1872. That is, when the community took its name in 1871, Baron Liskar, Sir John Young, was the Governor General of Canada. Uh, Sir John Young was born in 1807 in Bombay, India. He was the eldest son of Sir William Young and Lucy Frederick. He was the father, his father was a director and large shareholder in the East India Trading Company. There's a name that, that echoes down through our past as well. As a young man, Sir John was, uh, was educated at Eton and Oxford in England and was elected to the House of Commons in 1831 and served a long and distinguished career in politics, including several high, high profile postings. On December 29th, 1861, Sir John Young was appointed Governor General of Canada and Governor of Prince Edward Island. He assumed office on February 2nd of 1869. In his first year in Canada, the Red River Rebellion broke out. As an appeasement, he proclaimed an amnesty on December 6th of 1869. During his term of office, the province of Manitoba was created and joined the Can and joined Can Canadian Confederation and the Hudson's Bay Company territory of Rupert's Land was transferred to Canada. He was also in office during the Fenian Raids of 1870, and Sir John Young also became Baron Liskar on November 2nd of 1870. Baron Liskar did not enjoy good health in Canada and resigned prematurely in June of 1872. He died at his family home, leaving his wife Adelaide Annabelle Dalton. The couple had no children, and the baroncy ended with him. Canadian Prime Minister Sir John A. Macdonald publicly considered Liskar the ablest of all the Governor Generals under whom he had served. And you can read a lot more out there. There's some links we'll share here on uh, on the stories of Sir John Young. Uh, Baron Liskar, again, the second Governor General of Canada between 1868 and 1872. And his name is on our landscape today. Thanks in large part to Samuel Alexander opening a post office in 1871 at the near the intersection of what is today uh, um, Winston Churchill Boulevard and Derry Road West, uh, in which he named the community Liskar after the Governor General at the time. So Alexia, thank you for your question. And thank you once again for spending some time with us here at Ask a Historian. It's always fun to explore the different stories around the history of the city of Mississauga. Please send in your, story, send in your questions and each week we'll explore some of those stories here on Ask a Historian. 